Welcome back everyone. So in this NFT series, I will explain everything about NFTs and I promise you don't need to watch another channel on this topic. In today's video, we will talk about the F in NFTs which stands for fungibility. It is so important that if you don't get it right, you will never understand NFTs. So I'm doing a full video on this topic. By the end of this video, you will truly understand the basis of all the NFTs. By end of the series, I promise I will turn you into an expert in picking the winning NFTs for your investments. For those new, I started this channel to provide content based on not just opinions but real data, hard facts and reasoning. If you are a long term investor, you will find a ton of value in this channel and I promise you will not be disappointed. Let's get into the world of NFTs starting with fungibility. There are many dimensions to it, but fundamentally when we say something is fungible, it means it's exchangeable with an identical unit. Take a hundred dollar note for example, if you lend hundred dollars to your friend, you don't mind receiving another hundred dollar note in return. It need not be the exact note, right? So you can say cash is fungible. And also fungible items have same properties. When you look at a hundred dollar note, you know it's a hundred dollar note because they all share the same properties. Also fungible items have the same face value. All hundred dollar notes are worth hundred dollars. And finally, the perceived value of these fungible items is usually same as the face value. People don't value a hundred dollar note more than hundred dollars. Let's take the four dimensions we just discussed and see how they look like for fungible and non-fungible items. We took an example of fungible item, a hundred dollar note, which is exchangeable with same properties, same face and perceived value, right? Now on the other hand, non-fungible items are not exchangeable and they have different properties, face and perceived value. We'll do an exercise on this, so don't worry too much at this point. I want you to think of fungibility as a wide spectrum, okay? There are things that are truly fungible or non-fungible and things that are both fungible and non-fungible based on the context. So the takeaway here is fungibility is not always a binary thing. Let's jump into a small exercise. In this exercise, I got six different things and we will together classify each one into fungible and non-fungible items. So let's start with the cash. So we saw cash is exchangeable with same properties and same value. Is it truly fungible? Yes, largely that's right. But every dollar note also has a serial number. And you know, there are collectors who value a dollar note based on how fancy the serial number is. So the face value is still the same, which is $1, but the perceived value is different, right? Because there are also properties that are different, like the serial number. Let me take you to a website. So this website tells us how collectors value rare serial numbers. For example, numbers with seven leading zeros could be valued at $1,000. And there are also patterns that are valued at about $2,000, right? So see how the perceived value changes based on the uniqueness. So in a way, every note is also unique and valued differently. So you can say cash is largely fungible because it's widely exchangeable at the face value and rarely non-fungible. For example, from the collector's point of view. Let's move on to cars. We know cars can be traded, but you can't truly exchange a car with another car for the same value because every car is valued differently, especially if it's a used car, right? So it's non-fungible in that way. But a dealer can exchange a brand new car with same make, model, trim, etc. with another dealer. So it's fungible from a dealer point of view, right? So largely every car has a different value due to different properties. So we can say cars are largely non-fungible and rarely fungible, which is the exact opposite of cash. Next is houses. Each house can be even more different with the other houses, right? Because there are hundreds of properties that could change from house to house, right? Like location, size, layout, finishing, things like that. So houses are largely non-fungible. Next is shares. 
we can exchange a share of a company with another share because every share is exactly the same no one values one share more than the other for the same company so it is fungible but shares between different companies cannot be exchanged right so it is non fungible in that way generally speaking we can say shares are fungible next is movies let's say you run a production company and you just produced a movie will you exchange the rights of the movie with another for the same value no right because every movie is valued differently and budget could be the main reason so movies are non fungible and the last is art this one is obvious right we all know all artworks at least the handmade ones are unique as every artist has their unique style so art is non fungible as you can see from this exercise many real world assets are in fact non fungible now that's the reason behind all this hype around nft guys take a second can you think of any other item that's truly fungible if you can put it in the comment section below we talked enough about the f in the nft now let's move on to the t the token nft is nothing but a token that represents verifiable ownership of a non fungible item we saw a number of non fungible items in the exercise let's go back and connect the dots i got rid of all the fungible ones and here i am left with four non fungible items now think of a token representing the ownership of all these items a car or a house owner can have a token representing the ownership of the asset that's two nfts for you and a movie producer or a production house can have an nft for ownership of a movie right that's movie nft and same with an artist with artwork that's art nft so you see there are a number of types of nfts depending on the real world asset that it is tied to in this video we covered fungibility and i just scratched the surface on nfts in the next video of this nft series i will deep dive into what an nft is and why we need nft to prove your ownership if you got specific topics on nfts you are interested in type it in the comments below and i will cover some of them in the series see you guys